Good morning. So today is Thursday and somehow it's 7 o'clock and I cannot start my vlog simply because of the noise outside. So you can hear the kapitbahay, tahol ng aso and all. Anyway, I decided to have a vlog again because um, we missed at almost two weeks of online class um, for some reasons. That's why although they have the modules pero i think that this is not enough for the to the students to really have a gist of what they are reading importante pa rin may share ang mga professors so that they can actually understand more about the the subject they have so anyway what is the vlog for today so remember last week we started um the discussion about the the european history part of the european history understanding europe and the role of europe's history in uh, the tourism industry pero naisip ko bakit european history agad why not start with um somehow the uh, the reasons why tourism um the international tourism industry took place diba so kailan ba during the ancient times ba? Well, basically, during the ancient times, nagsisimula na talaga mag-travel yung mga tao, but not for tourism purposes. So, even the earliest people, the cavemen, really would go out to their, out of their caves to look for food, to hunt and all. But we cannot actually tell that that is tourism. Of course not, kasi basic needs ang kailangan nila, di ba? Pero, mag-move forward tayo. Remember when there is one man who was called to be the father of history and that he was Herodotus. Kasi simula nung naging uh, adult siya, nung simula na siyang magsulat uh, about the places he uh, traveled. And so nakita niya ang ganda ng Babylonia. Nakita niya ang ibang bahagi na meron sa Egypt. So ina-account niya yon. But then aside from him being told that by Cicero, that he was the father of history because of his writings. Sinabi rin na he was also the father of lies. Kasi ang daming questionable sa lahat ng mga journals na sinulat niya. Pero, um, parang exage daw. Pero, there is one um, French archaeologist and historian by the name of Michel Pissel that in 1834, parang sinundan niya yung mga sinulat ni Erodotus and somehow totoo parang um, hindi hindi exage parang inexplain niya na it's a matter of interpretation so nandun lahat nakita niya na merong uh, gigantic ants sa ganito and so and so forth kaya parang because of him vindicated talaga si Herodotus anyway um Herodotus was not a Greek he, he was born somewhere in Turkey Kaya lang, he stayed in Greece for so long. That's why he, he was called Greek. So, pag-usapan natin yung Greek. Anong ginawa ng Greek sa uh, pag-dami uh, ng mga tao ng travel? 776 BC. Remember that. So, nakasulat yan sa kasaysayan. That was the very first Olympic Games. Okay. That 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 happened. Um, imagine 776 BC, right? Um, so, bakit Olympic Games? Well, anyway, tingnan nyo yung, yung, ano, yung date BC, BCE, before the common era or before Christ. Ganong panahon, meron na silang parang ganong classic activity. Kaya, yung Olympic Games na meron tayo ngayon, hugot yon sa Olympic Games yung nakaraang panahon. Okay? So, dito nagsimula yung mga tao na talaga namang mag-travel. Anong meron sa Greece? Anong meron sa sa Mount Olympus because basically ginagawa niya lang yung Olympic Games at the foot of Mount Olympus maybe to honor uh, the god Zeus okay because they are going giving glory to the god and the gods and the goddesses so people from outside Greece would go to um, that part of uh, Greece to be able to witness the the Olympic Games. May mga some trivia, sorry for the kahol ng aso, na yung mga taong manonood ng anong tawag dun sa mga athletics, yung takbuhan, yung mga ganyan, kapag mga lalaki, syempre mga lalaki yung kasama dyan, 
um, it was written that only male can witness that kind of sports activity or that kind of sports competition yung athletics kasi yung mga athletes daw noon naka nude sa so, bawal ang mga babae hindi ba napaka intriguing ba't nakahubad <laughs> anyway siguro may rules kung bakit so dahil sa Olympic Games na yan hindi lang mga Grego ang talagang uh, nag nag travel so, you could also imagine some people from Egypt maybe kasi napaka tatawid tatawid lang or from Turkey magta travel talaga sila to witness that kind of event okay so mag fast forward tayo so after that a uh, thing that happened uh, of course the Roman Empire gave us also their um, contribution why mostly people travel what causes them to travel well because the Roman Empire uh, was able to um, expand their empire outside Rome so ang isa sa pinaka naisip nilang gawin ay gumawa ng network of roads for them to easily administer uh, the other places that they control Siyempre, mas mabilis magbiyahe, uh, mas maganda yung road, mas mabilis ang biyahe, uh, mas malalaman nila kung anong nangyayari dun sa ibang bahagi ng mga lugar na kung saan kinokontrol nila. Uh, for them to easily pacify kung meron mang uprising or something. So, di ba ang galing? And, huwag nyo rin kalimutan yung contribution ng Rome sa engineering. Alam nyo bang sa Roma, may mga ibang mga kalsada pa silang uh, ginawa nung ancient times pero hanggang ngayon ay nagagamit pa rin at nadadaanan so di ba ang galing so this kaya nga ang Rome is always being called the eternal city they were able to preserve and maintain the kind of um, um, construction buildings that they had in the past although ang makikita mo sa Rome medyo mga talagang sirana eh well <laughs> Kung ibang diki nga dito, eh, sandali lang si Rana, eh, doon pa kaya hundreds of years, nandun pa, diba? Um, nandun pa rin. Kaya nga, isa sa mga bucket list natin yan, punta sa Rome, diba, pakiramdaman. So, ano pa? Ano pa yung ibinigay ng, ng Roman um, Empire uh, bukod dun sa mga constructions of uh, cultural heritage nila, katulad ng Colosseum, katulad ng mga aqueducts na makikita mo, katulad ng mga Roman baths, and bukod dun sa ma yung mga yung mga bridges, ang dami, all over Europe, and of course, yung uh, network of roads. Um, they were also the ones who somehow provide inns for those several travelers who would go and visit other places so pakiwari ko o sa kasaysayan doon talaga nagsimula yung accommodation industry you see so a lot of them are going everywhere but then of course something happened um traveling halted in a specific era why because of the Rome, the fall of the roman empire so who would want to uh travel when yung lahat ng daanan mo may mga bandido na talagang magnanakaw at papatay di ba so wala so kung mag pumapabulusok na yung mga traveling people during that time or during that era bumagsak during the fall of the Roman Empire so yung sinasabi ko nandun yon sa uh, PowerPoint na binigay ko sa inyo class so the reasons the reason also why why Roman empire collapsed nandun din balikan na lang natin so what else happened but then of course nothing is permanent uh, after the collapse of the roman empire the, the european people started thinking um ganito na lang ba tayo magiging stagnant na lang ba tayo so nagkaroon ng another era wherein they started cultivating their culture their education their um civilization which led to the modern civilization i guess and that is the 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 era of the renaissance so that renaissance era took place somehow between 14th to 16th century so ano ano yung mga nangyari dito okay ang dami 
uh, isang napakamalaking importante event na nangyari. Nag-took off talaga yung Age of Exploration during this era, 14th to 16th century. So Spain and Portugal went as far as South America and some parts of North America. Okay, umabot pa sa Asia. Remember in this era when Philippines was rediscovered by Ferdinand Magellan in 1521? Okay, and so the rest is history. And then the British came to to control some parts of Asia such as India, okay, and some parts also of the Caribbean seas and Canada and Australia. Even the Netherlands, the Dutch people went to Indonesia and control Indonesia for hundreds of years. And so makita mo dito na talaga namang after they have found out that the earth was round, okay, so they travel this European pop um, empire um, uh, somehow empowered themselves to, to seek other places to control? Maybe. Um, sabi ko nga sa unang lecture, bakit yung mga nasa Asia, tahimik, parang uh, hindi sila lumayas, hindi sila nag-explore. Sabi nung isang studyante, sagot niya doon, di ba? Uh, meron tayo eh. <laughs> di natin kailangan we can preserve our food may asin tayo may ganito tayo um, merong bundok merong dagat kompleto so bakit kailangan pa mag-explore o malis mangalap unlike these people from the European continent may kulang ba sila okay o talagang nasa kanilang lahi lang yung pagiging um, adventurista well kung titignan mo sino ba yung most adventurous tourist <laughs> na lahat gustong subukan Diba? So, karaniwan dyan nasa mga, nasa mga European yan. Dala, kahit backpack lang dala nila. They'll go outside and then uh, outdoors and then do this and that. Okay? So, hindi natigil mula noon hanggang ngayon kung anong klase yung mga tao itong mga to. Kaya pwede sabihin natin na sila ba yung most adventurous? I could say yes. Oo. So, I, the, the Renaissance era do not only give us those kind of things but also they develop a kind of culture wherein they started painting, they started doing this. Dito na discovery mga magagaling na mga at mga masters when it comes to um, painting and the arts, di ba? Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and all. And then aside from that, nakita din natin na yung mga naunang ginawa nilang mga simbahan, din develop pa yon. Nilagyan ng paintings dun sa ceilings, kaya nga. Somehow, itong mga simbahan na to is one of the heritage that European uh, civilization in the ancient past left behind. And now, these are some of the greatest tourist attractions that one can look and see because of how grand they were able to produce this kind of architectural um, um, churches. Diba? So, dito nagsimula ang pag-build ng Gothic cathedrals. Okay? And, and all over Europe, makita mo, ang dami, ang ganda, na napakakatan. Yung ibang simbahan dyan, ginawa almost more than 200 years. Imagine that. Okay? Pero nandyan na yun. May enjoy mo. Okay? So, sino yung mga pupunta dito? Ay, yung mga simbahan na yun, hindi lang pinupuntahan ng mga katoliko. Or, uh, other tourists who are into um, heritage tourism, who are into history, um, halo-halo ang mga nagpupunta dyan and they really are admiring the beauty of these um, churches and other buildings and even castles all over Europe that time because they were able to produce that even after even before Renaissance okay and so also the Renaissance were able to uh, gave us what we call the Grand Tour okay at ito ata yung pinaka a major a final requirement ng mga estudyante nung unang panahon na kailangan mag-join sila ng grand tour for them to be able to, to complete the kind of education. <laughs> Teka mo na may nagtitinda ng taho. Ang lakas ng boses niya, in fairness. <laughs> so, grand tour. It, pinausay yan ni Ray, uh, Queen Elizabeth the first And maingay talaga si taho. Hindi <laughs> pa ako nag-aalbosal. Inuuna ko kayo. Um, so, yung nga, pina, pinauso no, Queen Elizabeth the first yung Grand Tour kasi gusto niya lahat ng mga, mga tao sa korte niya, well-educated. Also, the Grand Tour was, uh, 
one or another was able to introduce the the noble people about the culture of the other countries they visited kasi sakay sila ng barko lapag dito sa isang bansa okay so you need to somehow immerse yourselves in the kind of culture that these people are including uh, the the language they are speaking so nasabi ko nga na the, the best way for one to be able to learn the language and to speak it fluently is for them to really stay in the place and speak the language Okay, so kung mag-aaral mag ka rin lang ng lingwahe pero hindi mo yan ipapractice, madali yang ma makalimutan. Okay, so anyway, um, ang galing ng ginawa ng Grand Tour, di ba? Kaya nung mga, ang mga tao nung unang panahon, may alam silang mga lingwahe, hindi lang isa, lima at the most. Pero don't forget that the universal language the ancient people in Europe uh, were using was Latin. Okay, parang it's a Romanized language. But later, of course, you know that the kind of language that most of all or most people in the world can speak and understand is the the, the English language. Okay? Um, sabi nga nung isang estudyante ko na naging uh, French, dahil nakapangasawa ng French, um, one of the reasons why um, the French cannot speak English is because for the longest time they know very well that French is uh, the language that the European people speaks then biglang naging English so ayaw nilang tanggapin yun um, kasi nga, bakit? Diba? kaya nahuli sila when it comes to speaking language that's why for the longest time if you go to French they really won't speak to you in English because they cannot even speak to you in English recently tinanggap nila yan Kaya, kasi they need also tourism. Everyone needs tourism industry. It's one way of helping the economy of one particular country to simply continue to pop, pump up, di ba? Um, malaking bagay. Because, of course, you know very well that uh, this is a multi-billion industry. Okay? And it somehow will is giving lots of... Um, employment opportunities to all people, right? Kahit sino pwede sa tourism industry, okay? So, even those who are into information technology, kailangan namin kayo dito um, to really promote the industry, especially the new normal now, diba? Anyway, so hindi yun yung topic natin. So, 14th to 16th century, Renaissance era, hindi doon natapos. So, people really started educating themselves pero alam niyo bang prior to the 16th century may nauna ng mga universities na pinalagaan sa Europe, Europe one of the oldest universities that they have known is the university in Belgium which is Louvain University so prior to the 14th century meron na ng university nag-aaral na yung mga Europeans doon di ba um, pinapagana na nila yung utak nila kaya so ito yung mga nag-produce ng mga mga inventions and all pero huwag natin kalimutan na it took them almost 300 300 years to, to develop the cure for the bubonic plague ang tagal diba huwag naman sanang ganong katagal yung pag-develop ng ng uh, antivirus sa uh, um but I have to correct myself. If is it three hundred years or three hundred? Because um, the bubonic plague kept on coming back to Europe. Kaya nga fifty percent of European population uh, was somehow killed by that bubonic plague. Babalik balik. They thought that it is a wrath of God that that would be the end of the world. But it's not. Uh, virus lang pala yung galing sa uh, flee ng mga daga na galing sa Asia. Galing sa China? I don't know. Sabi nila sa Asia na dinala ng mga barko sa Europe, Europa. So, ibig sabihin pa ulit-ulit yung mga ganyang klaseng pandemya. Okay? Um, kaya siguro dapat lahat ng mga tao sa buong mundo, lahat ng gobyerno sa buong mundo, paghandaan uh, yung gantong klaseng uh, pandemic na maaring maranasan ulit kasi nga paulit-ulit. Okay? 
So, humihinto ang mundo. Kaya, sinong natalo? Lahat. Okay? Sinong nanalo? China? <laughs> I don't know. Um, pero sana, di ba, makabawi na tayo. Lalo na sa Pilipinas. Dahil ang daming nawala ng trabaho. Yung mga estudyante kang flight attendant, nawalan din ng trabaho dahil dito. Um, yung mga na nahuling pumasok, siya lang na unang tanggalin. Kasi, ano yung papasweldo? Wala nga nagtatravel. So, bagsak. Um, Nag-uusap-usap kami ng may iba lang tayo. Nag-uusap-usap kami ng ibang mga estudyante ko na graduate din ng tourism na nasa na mga travel agent, uh, tour guide. Sabi nila, ba't hindi simulan yung domestic travel na para lang makapagsimula na para lang may meron ng kita, ba diba? Domestic travel na dito lang, kunyari within Luzon, um, na meron lang something restrictions. Payagan na natin. Bakit ba hindi? Um, hindi ko alam kung ano yung plano ng DOT tungkol dito. Um, kasi I stop watching news. <laughs> Why? Uh, it's most of the news is really negative. It 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 is affecting my mental health. Ah, uh, kaya nga bakit pa? Di magbasa na lang ako, di ba? So nakikibalita na lang ako sa mga estudyante ko. Pero yung nararanasan nila, nararamdaman ko kasi lahat tayo affected. Anyway, kaya they created the group, yung mga travel agents. They created the group and this group is all about them selling online. They are all helping each other to to cope with the current situation. Um, so, I was saying uh, that this kind of situation that we are in happened in the past. And maybe it will happen in the future. Diba? So, anong kahandaan natin? Anong kahandaan ng future generation sa ganitong mga mangyayari pa? Okay? So, kasi hindi natin alam sinadya ba ito o talagang uh, virus lang talaga ito na nandyan lang sa paligid. Wala namang aamin, ba? Diba? Anyway, balik tayo sa ating pag-aaral. So, the Grand Tour era umabot yan until the 17th century. So, parang i-connect mo yung tourism course, di ba? Anong major requirement sana natin is for you to be able to somehow tour around places. Um, ginagawa naman ito sa ibang mga fresh world countries if you are taking up this kind of program tourism. So, they are traveling as far as outside the country. Okay, pamiliin sila. Kahit nga hindi tourism ang program, talagang they are being in, encouraged by the university where they are studying to experience other culture. But in other, yeah, in other um, universities in the Philippines, also, oh, oh, um, actually, yung isang friend ko, isang former student ko na nagtuturo sa isang um, private school, Europe yung pinaka-final requirement ng mga fourth-year tourism students nila. Okay, tayo nga, hindi tayo makapunta ng, ng Baguio ngayon. Ala, the last time, hindi kami nakapunta ng Baguio for some reasons. Sana lang, um, maging malawak din yung pangunawa ng mga nasa institusyon kung papano ba talaga um, or ano ba yung mga dapat talagang requirements na dapat iparanas nila sa mga tourism students na katulad ninyo. ba? So, you can only appreciate the beauty of one country, one place, one town, one city if you were able to immerse and experience that destination. Kung puro kwento lang, wala yan. Kung puro picture yan, wala din yan. Okay? Pero the more you travel, the more you engage with people, the more you eat the kind of food they are the food they are eating the more you talk with them the more you are into the beautiful nature and attractions the more you get inside the churches and admire the beauty of the architectural style diba? 
the better for you as a tourism student and not that only the better for you as a person okay you get to appreciate you you tend to become less judgmental you tend to love to be to be nationalistic about you being a filipino because that is your dna <laughs> sabi ni miss nanggit sinabi ko lang ulit kaya nga kasi dapat may identity tayo being a filipino eh diba okay just like them they are known to be say for example if you are a viking alam mo yan so ano ba yung viking may malalaking tao blue eyed people parang ganyan pero wala nang viking ngayon okay, ano ba yung french ano yung identity niya nila sabi snob daw sila well if you are living in paris they tend to be snob for, for some reasons not because and uh, sinasadya nila yun but because they are like that <clears throat> so if if you go to india iba din diba iba din yung pagkain if you go to to japan iba din Kaya, everyone has their own identity everyone has their own dna kaya sana yung mga pinoy tayo diba um, alam natin kung sino tayo anong gusto natin ano yung pagkakakilanlan natin bilang mga pilipino kasi kung hindi nakakahiya okay Kaya nga, dapat laging tinuturo yan sa eskwela. Sino ka, ano ka, ano pinagkaiba mo bilang isang tao sa ibang mga tao sa buong mundo. Okay? Uh, mahal mo ba yung bansa mo? Just like how the Japanese, the French, um, and other people love the country. Parang ganyan. Oo, hindi maalis na na-influensyahan tayo ng ibang mga, uh, mga kultura dahil tayo o naman ay Uh, nasakop nila babalik tayo dyan sa nasan ba tayo kasi geography okay pag-aralan nyo bakit saan tayo nakalocate bakit ganito yung katagsaya natin so kasi nga I keep on telling that geography really define the culture define the history of one particular country so saan tayo nakalugay Southeast Asia ano kapitbahay natin Diba? Paano nangyari na naging ganito tayo bilang mga Pilipino? Well, anyway, it's not our topic. But if you want to ask some question, you can ask me in the comment. Uh, and I will reply to you. Okay? But don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, 27 minutes na tayo. So, at least 30 minutes. After the grand tour, what happened? So, every day parang 30 minutes to ha? Um... And if you wanted to ask more, simply comment. Um, importante yun para ma-motivate din ako to, to search more and to, to vlog more. So after the 14th, 16th to 17th century, after the Grand Tour, what happened in Europe? Na talaga namang, hindi lang Europe, talagang ito ay bonggang um, event. <laughs> hindi event, bonggang era na kung saan. talagang ang buong mundo ay uh, nabiyayaan. That was the Industrial Revolution. Kung ang Renaissance nangyari yan sa Florence, Italy, Italy, okay, doon nagsimula, doon umusubong eh. Yung Industrial Revolution nangyari yan sa England. So, ano yung Industrial Revolution? Um, bakit sinasabi ko na pati buong mundo na kinabang? Nung wala pang Industrial In, nabubulol ako, nung wala pang industrial revolution, people worked manually. Okay? Walang tigil yan. Alam niyo bang pati yung mga bata ginagamit para lang matapos ang mga trabaho? Child labor. Pero normal yun sa kanila. Okay? Kailangan eh. Lahat ng mga gawain nun ang um, ginagawa na sa pamamagitan ng mga kamay. Kaya nga they were able to create several uh, parang classes in the society na merong ganito may ganyan, tapos may mga artisans, o ba diba? yan yung mga gumagawa talaga tapos may mga trainees sila na bago talaga tawagin full-fledged panday, kunyari dadaan ba yan sa mahabang training they will undergo this and that okay, para lang maging full-fledged panday, diba, ganyan okay, so industrial revolution faved away in the 18th century in England, okay, part of the United Kingdom, so anong nangyari? pinalitan nito yung mga kamay ng mga makinarya ng mga machines. So, from hand labor to machineries. And so, 
nag-iba din yung uh, uri ng um, society meron ang, ang ang Europe noon okay na talagang umabot sa buong mundo okay paano na iba ma'am then nung una the kind of society they had was between the, the rich and the poor pero nung during the industrial revolution nagkaroon ng pagkakataon yung ibang mga tao nag mag-invest ng business okay at doon umusubok yung tinatawag natin yung middle class society sa so, tatlo na the middle class sino yung middle class society ito yung mga tao na not that very rich and not poor okay um, they can be able to enjoy the kind of life they want because ayan na may pera na sila eh and dahil may middle class society um, nagkaroon ng pagkakataon yung ibang tao na somehow uh, magnegosyo dito dumami yung mga negosyante dahil maraming maraming demand na mga produkto which can now be able to supply so dumami yung pera lumago ang negosyo ang business kahit na ano okay? so nung marami ng pera nabago din yung uri ng pagtatrabaho ng mga tao so kung dati 27, 24-7 round the clock talagang walang magpapahinga um, dahil mabilis na yung trabaho hindi ba? na meron ng makinarya nagkaroon ng shifting at dahil doon yung ibang mga bata um, hindi na hinayang magtrabaho it's between male na lang and female kung gusto nila or mostly male at dahil marami na silang pera yung iba nagkakaroon ng chance na mag mag leave mag take ng holiday at dahil doon uh, yung iba nag holiday at nagta travel sa, isang, sa ibang mga lugar dito ulit nagsimula ang traveling did you get that? Because they have this money to be able for them to use in a particular activity wherein they could recharge, they could enjoy before they go back to work once again. So, dito na din uh, du dumating yung mga pagkaka pagkakaroon ng mga union in the factory. Ano ba yung union? Siyempre, alam nyo na kung ano yung union. The, this is the organization that would uh, rightfully um, somehow protect the interest of the workers they 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 would demand something from the owner of the of the factory because they are the workers diba? they are the ones uh really uh making that company to become rich kung wala sila so paano gagana yung factory so nagkaroon ng union nagkaroon ng mga demand so sabi nila Palitan mo yung oras ng pagtatrabaho. Sobrang pagod na kami. Ikaw nakabu ka lang dyan. Kumikita ka pa. Gawin mong 8 hours. So, yung lagpas ng 8 hours, dapat overtime yun. Additional pay yun. Dapat meron kaming mga benefits such as holiday, etc., etc. So, doon nagsimula yan. Diba? Kaya ngayon, kung natandaan nyo, dati yung huli ng turisme meron noon, um, so, so, sobrang konti lang na mga um, activities na pinararana sa mga tao more on ano lang more on relaxation lang talaga more on sightseeing kasi pagod yung katawan ng mga tao nung unang panahon ang gusto lang nila talaga manood ng sunset okay wala masyadong activity pero anong klaseng tourism meron tayo ngayon tiba in one destination ando na lahat lahat ng klaseng activity na maaring enjoy mo para hindi ka na lumabas at mamili ng ibang lugar more on walking Okay, bakit ganun ma'am? Simple lang. Um, we are limited to 8 hours uh, per day work. And then in one week, we have at least 2, 2 days of um, rest. The iba nga 3. Okay, and then we were given holiday with pay. So, in other words, once we, we decide to go on a tour or a trip, it's not for us to relax. It's for the tourists to engage to a lot of activities. Kaya, nabago. Kaya, walang gagawa ng isang destination na kung saan magre-relax lang ang mga turista. They'll get bored. Nakakapag-relax na sila sa bahay. So, anong hinahanap ng mga yan? Iba? Activities. Anong klaseng activities? Depende kung anong klaseng turista ka. So, naiba yung mundo ng tourism because, of course, you know very well that one of the characteristics of the tourism industry is that it is very dynamic. Okay? Kaya nga, kung titignan mo, ang daming iba't-ibang klaseng tourism 
meron tayong tinatawag ngayon at malulula, malulula ka kung ano yon So, after 2020, we, we really don't know kung anong klaseng tourism meron tayo. Anyway, so that was the um, the 18th century um, and the Industrial Revolution. Hihinto ako doon. Kaya ang assignment nyo ngayon, um, anong mga pagbabago meron sa Industrial Revolution, after ng Industrial Revolution, ano mo yung, alam mo yung uh, lugar na meron during the Renaissance era na na palaganap uh, ano yung mga lugar na o yung mga na-create nila o yung mga bagay na na-create during the Renaissance era okay so sa buong mundo o hindi mag-concentrate tayo sa, sa Europe um, anong klaseng mga lugar ang pinupuntahan ng mga turista sa sa Europe muna tayo okay so paano nakatulong ang industrial revolution sa kasaysayan ng Europa okay hanapin nyo sino si Thomas Cook and that would be all for today class I hope um, you'll ask me questions in that comment section box and then I'm going to answer you. So, kakain muna ako. <laughs> Hindi pa ako nag -aalmusal. Good morning, good day, and I hope you continue reading your module. Okay? Have a nice day.